So, hello again everyone. Uh, welcome to the part 3 of uh, the series Writing Social Network in Go. And uh, today we will continue development. And uh, first uh, I would like to uh, show you uh, how I uh, set up uh, the building process and uh, what uh, is actually required to launch uh, the application that uh, I'm writing. So the first step would be uh, to uh, actually install Go. Uh, I think that uh, if you uh, watch this series you already know how to do this. So the second thing is uh, that uh, you need to uh, check out <laughs> the sources and uh, you can see that uh, uh, there are some commits that are uh, made for part 2 and that uh, according to git status uh, nothing was committed yet uh, so we'll start uh, directly from uh, where we left off uh, in uh, part 2 so th the second thing that you need to do is to start mem memcache uh, you install memcache it uh, in any way you want, it is pretty simple. And uh, uh, I started with default configuration uh, because it is just a demo. And uh, using default port, it doesn't require any privileges to do so. So I start memcache it. Um, and I also uh, start MySQL uh, that uh, is uh, listening at default MySQL port. Uh, yes, and I'm using the simple launcher for that, so that's called MUMP. Uh, you can uh, launch uh, MySQL server directly, it doesn't matter. So I start MySQL server and hide the window. So the next thing that you need to do is to uh, connect to your MySQL server and here are uh, the settings for uh, connecting to MUMP uh, and uh, you can see that it is connected, uh, connected using uh, Unix socket And then uh, go to social uh, database, create social database if you need this, and import uh, the MySQL dump uh, from structure SQL. So here it is. Uh, you connect to MySQL and uh, load these SQL uh, queries into uh, the server. And uh, you're good to go. So you also need to add users. Uh, and um, for now I didn't uh, make any regist uh, registration. Uh, I just added users manually uh, with the password that you can see here. Uh, it is uh, encrypted 123. And also you will probably need to uh, set some MySQL settings, uh, for example, that are in main go, uh, in func main. Uh, so you will probably need something different from root root, uh, tcp, etc. Uh, you actually get the password hash that I wasn't talking about at all uh, in uh, get Oh, hash password hash is using this function so you could uh, for example uh, do something like this when you start your application you uh, print uh, password hash for for example one two three four and uh, when you start your application I'm using rebuilder.php that uh, continuously rebuilds uh, 
uh, these sources, but it only works on Mac. So you could do something like go build and uh, then run social network, and you will see the password hash for one two three four. Uh, so, and if you will uh, type one two three, then the hash will obviously be the same as uh, uh, I have in database. So you see something like db beef here, <laughs> and uh, here it is. So uh, you can uh, see that. Uh, the hash is consistent, uh, otherwise it is useless. So you can do something like this uh, before we have actual registration of users. So okay, uh, I will use my rebuilder script. That is pretty simple. I think I showed it already. Uh, what it is doing, it is uh, listening to the events uh, that something happened in the directory and uh, you could specify other uh, either notify Darwin uh, from my Unreal Sync project or you can use something else uh, and uh, uh, when this utility prints something that it means that we need to rebuild the project and uh, it is rebuilt so no support from uh, the editor or ID is not required. Uh, no support is required. So it continuously rebuilds our project. So I'll do this. And we open uh, localhost 8080 in all our browsers that we use for testing. I use several browsers so that uh, it is easier to navigate. So Chrome logged in first, then pro for example Firefox. Um, and we see that Chrome is online. And Safari. So we have uh, three users online. And uh, as uh, we do not show users uh, I, we don't show yourself <laughs> in online list uh, so you see only two online users which are the other browsers that we have open and there is uh, one little trick that is in uh, JavaScript uh, that is in main.js so the little trick is that when uh, the WebSocket connection is closed, then we log that uh, it is closed and try to connect in a second. And it is enough uh, for uh, all browsers to reconnect to WebSocket that is uh, held, uh, the connection that is held uh, Permanent, permanently, uh, it is enough uh, to keep it alive uh, in our case. So if you write a real application, of course, you will need some more sophisticated methods of keeping uh, your uh, connection alive. And maybe we will uh, do something about it in uh, some future. So let me show it to you. So we make some changes. For example, readme would be a good idea to write it. Uh, so something like uh, the sources for YouTube writing social network uh, in GoLang series. And so we have it rebuilt, and uh, you can you can see that uh, everyone is still online. Uh, <laughs> I wasn't fast enough to show you how it really works. Okay, let's try again. I'll save, and then yeah, nothing happens. 
so it is very fast so you will not be able to see that uh, it has disconnected okay even though we have rebuilt it several times okay uh, so let's uh, continue from where we started is uh, we uh, it is uh, we began to write the timeline so uh, I don't remember what we have finished uh, what to do oh yeah uh, we we did nothing probably not too much uh, so timeline we have show timeline and so no one calls show timeline yet uh, yes and you can see that uh, close and open already uh, uh, occurred so uh, that's uh, we had to uh, rebuild and so we stayed connected so show timeline um, doesn't print uh, anything by itself but uh, it's uh, uh, puts a handler uh, a callback that uh, logs a reply so we have undefined as a result of uh, uh, show timeline call and uh, the results so we receive an object uh, uh, that uh, has messages Uh, that are corresponding to our timeline so we could try to show these messages uh, so something like show timeline results so we would then uh, define function show timeline results uh, reply and uh, so what we would do then is uh, uh, get our messages code and uh, do something similar response okay uh, we should be consistent in our naming show timeline response so show messages response is pretty big uh, function so we will copy it <laughs> and uh, uh, see what we can do we don't need to erase it all uh, messages text would be probably uh, what would it be it would be like uh, Timeline events. Okay, timeline messages is okay. Uh, so these all are messages actually. So uh, then uh, we would have it. We would name this uh, timeline messages. Uh, we would give it timeline messages class as well. Uh, and what we would do is uh, iterate all the messages and uh, uh, do one little thing uh, that is different so we show messages um, in reverse order so when we write to someone so Safari for example here is a test um no um actually we should show all the messages uh we should uh always uh show the first messages first and not append them So it is uh, the code would be pretty much the same, except yeah. Let's try this. Uh, so uh, timeline timeline 
text. Oh, okay, text. Timeline texts. So uh, we create timeline element from message. And then if uh, uh, we Uh, then uh, if we have more than uh, limits results we would create a text node uh, which would be variable and it could uh, it is probably an error that uh, it is not variable here it would be global variable if we don't uh, specify it as var so we create div that uh, is uh, that needs to be shown uh, first. Yes, and that is what uh, it does. So it would uh, show like timeline show more, uh, and uh, it would request the next timeline events. Uh, mm, yes, it it seems like. It's correct, but uh, we need to um, show it at the end. And request get timeline. User two it will, would be empty, and limit would be default timeline limit. We will then remove this and uh, show. Show timeline response. So we would call uh, call ourselves show timeline response with a reply. And so then we would uh, define a function uh, that uh, That shows the that creates timeline element. So it would be create timeline element from the message. So the message has uh, the following fields. It uh, has uh, text, user ID, and username. So <clears throat> we would create uh, probably. Uh, a div create elements uh, div uh, that would contain two elements at least two elements it would be a username and it would be message text so for example uh, we of course give it class name that's a timeline timeline event And so create two two elements. So username it would be for example another div <laughs> uh, username element. Username. Uh, and then uh, message uh, that would be also div yes and uh, username element would uh, have uh, text message username and the message would have uh, And uh, timeline message, timeline username, and message would uh, contain text, uh, uh, the message text. So message uh, message element append child. Uh, so then we append all of this to the div that we created
and return it. So I don't know what we will see, <laughs> to be honest. So we should try, at least. So uh, timeline texts is this uh, is this div. So then we request uh, timeline and show the response. But we do not call show timeline at any moment <laughs> of time. But uh, we will. Uh, we will uh, in some point. At some point. So show timeline. We should call this, and we see that uh, there are. Uh, what appears to be two messages, but actually it is one div uh, that is called timeline event with the timeline username and uh, timeline message. So mm, we should give it some style probably. And another thing that we should do is uh, we should uh, actually call show timeline when we uh, 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 when we show the timeline uh, page, but actually, as it is a social network, then uh, we would probably load the timeline uh, as the first thing that uh, uh, we will always show uh, some kind of time. We will request timeline, but uh, uh, user will see it's. Uh, uh, when he uh, when he requests uh, the uh, timeline page and uh, it doesn't scale too well so we actually should only uh, show um, the corresponding contents only when user requests it but uh, for now we will always do it mm, so Maybe it is not the best idea, but uh, we will try. So we set up the WebSocket connection somewhere. Okay, uh, so let's try. It doesn't really work because, uh, as you can see, uh, WebSocket is still connecting. So uh, we would need to wait until it connects. So. Uh, WebSocket on open would probably uh, should uh, handle um, so we would uh, we need to have uh, some indication that uh, uh, the WebSocket is not uh, connected now and that we should postpone our uh, requests until we connect so uh, connected would be false and uh, then uh, we would have uh, pending requests that would be an empty array for now and when we connect uh, we do the following we say that uh, that we're connected and uh, then we uh, then we g uh, go through pending requests and execute them and that's all and uh, the pending requests would be So when we send request, uh, we see if connected, then uh, we send it. Else we, otherwise we register it as pending a request. So it would be something like uh, var mm, So how should we call it var func? Equals uh, 
function uh, that uh, uh, sends the request <coughs> to the callback. So if we are connected, then we call it directly. Otherwise, we uh, pending uh, we push it uh, to the pending requests so that when uh, we are connected, then the request would be uh, satisfied. And uh, another thing that we should do is uh, to uh, clear the pending requests uh, when we are closed and say that we're not connected. So for now it would uh, work. So uh, yes, when uh, we are default con not connected, uh, when we are connected, then we set the variable to true and uh, send all the requests at once. Mm. And when uh, the connection is closed, then uh, uh, pending requests are flushed. And so uh, we log that uh, connection is closed. So let's see how it works. Yeah, you see, everything is fine. So now we could write some um, CSS. Uh, I'll try to split it in sections. So it would be timeline. Uh, Probably it would be the same as for messages uh, uh, about the padding. Maybe not the top padding, although uh, so. Uh, so here it is, and uh, we should also style something like timeline user. It would be like float left, it would be bold, and it would be inline block. And timeline uh, message. Or timeline events. How did we call this? Timeline event, yes. Uh, so in timeline event uh, would be like nothing. <laughs> so it doesn't do anything, uh, probably because it is username. Yes, uh, so it would have something like padding. A little bit, maybe only only right. Okay, so three pixels. Okay, ten pixels. So Safari wrote uh, hello from Safari. <laughs> uh, yeah, that is very useful. But uh, I don't know. It will have to do. Uh, for now, so uh, we should actually try this uh, with several events. So, uh, hello from Safari. And so, do do we have uh, a method to uh, send timeline event? I think no. Okay, uh, so let's do it. Let's try to. Uh, create more events for Chrome. It is user ID two. So uh, 
So we should see the new uh, events uh, at the top in our timeline. Uh, so it is not what we see now. So we see the new events uh, at the bottom and to illustrate that so we probably need to uh, to create some data element and I think that uh, yeah timestamp element would be useful function to have so our function create timestamp element for our timestamp so that we don't have to copy paste uh, the uh, uh, timestamp uh, code Uh, so the uh, we shouldn't copy uh, we don't need to copy paste uh, code that is uh, uh, dedicated to displaying uh, the timestamps that uh, we use which are nanoseconds. seconds so we sh could probably try to do something like this to add timestamps to a timeline yeah and we don't have any style for uh, for it, so I'll just do the following now, and and we don't see Safari as online user. I don't know why. Okay, uh, so yeah, but timestamps are not really. Not really showing where they should be, uh, which is not very good. So, okay, uh, we'll try to uh, do something with it. So, our timeline, yeah, timeline event. Oh, no, uh, we could probably try to change the order. So, message timestamp and uh, timeline event timestamp. Yeah, everything is okay. Uh, but uh, you can see that. Uh, the events that occurred uh, mm, later are shown uh, uh, not at the top but at the bottom and we should fix that uh, uh, by uh, reversing the order uh, that uh, uh, the order of messages and uh, there are a couple of ways to do this but uh, I think that the best uh, would be to uh, iterate it from uh, to iterate it uh, in uh, reverse order. Minus one, probably. Yeah, and uh, I think that it is a good time to write some code that uh, actually sends the events because uh, it is not really easy to. It is not too easy to uh, debug the timeline. Uh, so. Yes, we should uh, here. We should insert the code that uh, sends a message. 
Uh, so would be like yeah, send message, but uh, not. But we're not going to send message. Uh, we are going to send timeline. So send. Do we have a constant? Add to timeline. Yes, request. Add to timeline. Uh, we don't specify who are we talking to. We are just um, uh, specifying the text. And I think that it is, uh, yes, message. Uh, we could probably, yes, uh, text. Or message, okay, okay message that. No, <laughs> uh, sorry, text would be better. And maybe it will not compile now, or oh, it does. Okay, so uh, text would be message text, and uh, uh, we would uh, send add to timeline, and we would receive uh, some response for that and uh, add to timeline then target value uh, so let's try this so we have our code compiled let's try to uh, write something so like hello world and so uh, we got a uh, response that uh, it is invalid request type requested to timeline. So uh, we should now write the code on server to accept these requests and uh, do something with them. And maybe you can uh, already see the button here that we're just copy pasting the code and it's not too good. Uh, so we should probably do something about that in some near future. So request add to timeline um, and process uh, add to timeline. Sorry. So, um, yeah, th there is nothing, uh, nothing more to it. So we uh, get some like callback handle. No. Uh, <laughs> Process send message, and we should uh, write something similar to it. So it would be uh, process add to timeline instead. And so uh, we initialize the t current timestamp per error. And we uh, should do the following. We need to uh, copy uh, the uh, timeline for every user that uh, is a friend of uh, current user, which are all users. So we need to do the following. We need to... Uh, write some function that uh, would uh, return us all users and we need only user IDs so uh, get, no, uh, get all user friends get all user friends and we would accept <coughs> the user ID And uh, return the array of. Uh, right. Let's uh, say that get all user friends. 
uh, get all user friends would uh, return just uh, user IDs for now. So we would return uh, uh, user IDs, and that would be in 64 slice and uh, an error if it uh, occurred. So get all friends would ignore uh, the parameter that uh, accepts uh, the um, user ID that uh, um <laughs> sorry so uh, our function would ignore user ID parameter that is uh, supplied uh, at least at the moment uh, because uh, all our friends all our users are friends so get friends list so get friends list uh, we should then initialize it get friends list error prepare uh, the statement that would be like select ID from user and if we can't prepare it then uh, something is wrong so I couldn't prepare get friends list <clears throat> and that's all so our get fr get all user friends or maybe get user friends would be okay uh, so we should uh, execute the statement so mm, get user friends no Get user friends statement. Ah, get all users. Get friends list. Okay. Uh, should should execute it. We don't pass any parameters here. Um. Then if error. Is not zero, then we return, and otherwise, uh, we should always close the result that we uh, receive. And for uh, we should do something like So we create the slice and uh, and depend it. So we do rows So we don't select often, so <clears throat> I actually don't remember how to use this. Yes, so if we encounter an error, then we should print it and return with error because uh, something went wrong. Uh, something uh, went wrong, even though we have an incomplete list of user IDs. And then uh, we append it. And return. Miss it. <coughs> Excuse me. So we have a query and get user friends. So now we mm, uh, we're ready to do this. So get user friends.
and we have send error method. So user ID so error equals uh, get user friends add a friend to our user and if error is not nil then we uh, print an error and return then when we have uh, all user IDs we can iterate them and try to execute the statement that uh, inserts uh, the message in the timeline so it would be user ID, source user ID and message and timestamp so uh, add to timeline statement execute uh, we we pass user ID uh, that we need to insert to uh, user ID it's our user ID then uh, it is message and timestamp and see if, error, if an error occurred then something went wrong and uh, we should do this the same thing we could use transactions to do this but uh, the thing is that uh, we probably should do uh, another thing uh when uh when uh, uh we have a distributed system uh, there is no such thing as uh uh there is a su such a thing that uh, like uh distributed transactions but uh, it doesn't work too well and we should probably do uh the other thing is that we defer uh, the request uh, we defer copying uh, of uh, the timeline event uh, when user sends something so we respond that everything is okay and uh, put uh, the this code into queue and it would try to execute uh, until everything is fine so until all users receive the copy of uh, our timeline event so that's why we don't uh, use transactions here because they are not really necessary uh, because we work at a uh, local host so it shouldn't be an issue uh, for now and uh, when we distribute our system, then we need to use other patterns of uh, adding event to user timeline. I hope you <laughs> understand uh, what I meant here. Okay, so could not add to timeline. And if everything is okay, so we return uh, success. And we don't send any events at the moment, so we just uh, try to uh, do the minimal thing is to uh, copy all events to timeline. So let's try to do something. So hello world, uh, executed fine. So we have. Oh, we have user ID 0, 1, 2. No, it's not correct. Uh, <laughs> we iterated the keys instead of uh, values here. So let's try again. So yes, uh, Chrome uh, said hello world. Let's uh, then uh, 
see that, uh, for example, Safari would uh, say something, something hello Chrome. And when we refresh the page, we will see that hello Chrome. Uh, and Firefox would say like hi guys. And we will test uh, something like uh, so event number one, number two, number three. And we should see, yes, we should see that uh, uh, we exceeded the maximum number of events that are shown and uh, yeah, something went wrong. Event number three. Yeah, and we don't see event number three, so uh, that Firefox sent. Uh, that is indicator that uh, we have uh, incorrect query actually that selects from a timeline so it should be like it should be something different so order by timestamp descending with limit so here is uh, it is correct what we see in console um, so what we actually receive so we could log the response So we actually receive uh, the events, probably uh, probably we should log uh, which requests we are sending as well. So it would be like yes, let's see, uh, ah, yeah we specify limit 11 and so we probably use the, yes <laughs> we use the wrong constants in one place. That is why we shouldn't copy paste code. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so event number four. Maybe number five. Number six, number seven. Yes, and uh, what I was trying to to achieve here is uh, uh, to uh, force it to show this button. It is not really a button because. Uh, we have no style for this. Uh, okay, so messages show more and uh, timeline show more. So it is proper uh, link now. And we don't have online user, only have Firefox as online. And we don't have Safari. Oh, here it, here it is. So I think it's okay. Uh, all right. Uh, So something wrong happens here because uh, we already saw these events. And I think that uh, it is because we traverse in the wrong order. So minimal timestamp should be I don't know, a minimal timestamp should be correct. Probably. Ah, oh, no. Um, it is not. So, as we copy it, it's from messages code. Um, 
um, but uh, iterate it in uh, in reverse order. We should still keep the logic, otherwise we do not pass the correct timestamp. So here it is. Hmm. I don't really get what uh, what is happening here. Okay, so uh, <laughs> what we actually should do is to append, uh, not not to do such uh, strange trickery. We should just append uh, 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 these elements. That should be okay. So yes, it is still uh, in correct order. And when we request a new message, uh, then uh, it's shown at the bottom, not at the top. So it is uh, correct behavior. And let's try to check this setting to two, for example. So event number three is. So yes, everything uh, looks uh, correct now, and we could remove the logging. of messages and of requests probably as well. I'm fine. Yeah. And we should see two messages here. Yes. Okay. So uh, that's the timeline, but uh, the timeline doesn't have uh, one little detail. Uh, the life uh, life updates that we have for uh, messages. So we should do this. Uh, it is pretty simple as is with messages. So we uh, when we should take a look at send message. So you see that <clears throat> when we uh, send a message, we also send an event that new message has uh, that new message was received. So. Uh, we could do the same thing with uh, add to timeline. That new message was uh, sent, but it is not new message event. Uh, yeah, and we don't have a constant for this, so we should add it. Uh, event new timeline event. And it is not uh, from and to, it is uh, just from. Timestamp is now and uh, text is text. And actually we have one more, uh, one more thing to it is, uh, it is the user name. So we could pass it here, so it would be info name. With user ID and it would be username. Okay, so we have the username in the events of uh, 
uh, that new event was added to timeline and uh, then we should uh, see where uh, the event new message is used. It is used in uh, handle new message and you can see that in handle new message it uh, actually resends this event to only user from and user to and uh, this is a much uh, more sophisticated than we need for timeline because all our users are friends so it would be the new new timeline event handle new timeline event So we could copy handle new message and uh, remove everything that we don't need. It should be pretty easy. So handle handle new timeline event. So listener map uh, listener map is uh, the map of uh, all listeners. Uh, for all users, uh, <laughs> I don't remember. Ah, yeah. Uh, listener map uh, has map of all uh, listeners uh, with the corresponding information about them, and uh, user listeners is a map of uh, user ID and. Uh, uh, all the listeners uh, for that user. Okay, so uh, we only need to send, uh, we basically need to send the event to all um, users and that's it. So, um, it's much simpler than uh, than you might think. So we should just iterate over all our listeners. <clears throat> example for listener map when the key is uh, the channel of empty interfaces it is uh, listeners so if we exceed capacity then uh, we don't need to send anything otherwise we would block and uh, event would be event uh, so let, let's see, event new message is uh, that we received a new message. And message uh, is uh, itself uh, user ID, uh, user from, timestamp, and so on. So um, event new timeline event. It would be a uh, timeline message, would be type timeline message, and it is ID, user ID, username, text, so on. So uh, it, shall, it should all be in our event that we sent. So Yes, yeah, so we have timestamp, user ID, username, and text. So let's try. Uh, what do we need? We need uh, not event, new message, new timeline event. 
so it should be user ID no we should give it a distinct name otherwise it is silly So the timestamp would be events info timestamp. So we should just uh, try to copy everything from here, or rather from here. So we have user events user ID that is user ID uh, text that is text and username you can see that uh, it is not the uh, best way to do this because uh, obviously uh, it has uh, the problem that uh, we need to uh, copy paste the structure uh, the this uh, event fields that are map of strings so it is not the best thing to it is not the best way to communicate between different goroutines so we actually should uh, try to think about something better but uh, for now uh, it should work so we iterate over all our connected users and send them an event that's a new timeline event and that's it so so we received uh, response for missing sequence ID. Oh, we should probably fill in the type as well. This event, a new timeline event. Yes, you see, we fill in uh, the event new message here. Uh, and so uh, we should do the same for a timeline event. So hello world, hello again. So we have no ID uh, present here, but uh, we do not really need it. Uh, when uh, we send an event and uh, it seems that we have all necessary information to show the timeline event actually so let's try this uh, we have yes we have code that uh, uh, responds to different types of events so event new new timeline event a new timeline event and we could probably grab some code from uh, uh, messages so on new timeline event we don't need to compare anything and uh, timeline timeline text uh, we should insert before the first element uh, instead of appending it because uh, messages are shown new messages are shown at the bottom and new timeline events 
as shown at the top. So and so we create not a message element but timeline element. And that should be it. So let's try. Mm. Yeah, you see that everything works. And that's uh, yes, hello Chrome. Uh, so Firefox, Safari, and everyone should see it. Hi from Safari. So uh, hi from Safari is seen by everyone. And if we go to messages and send, for example, a message to Firefox. Hello, Firefox. So we sent a message from Chrome to Firefox. So we should see a message from Chrome. And uh, if uh, Chrome uh, writes something into timeline, while we have messages open, uh, it should still be visible. So I am having breakfast, for example. <laughs> uh, Chrome says that he is having breakfast. And when we go back to timeline, we see that uh, we still receive events uh, for timeline and uh, we uh, see everything uh, properly. So I think that would be it for this uh, third part. So we implemented uh, the timeline. Uh, we found out that our messages uh, passing architecture is not uh, very great. It uh, requires us to have a lot of copy paste and uh, it is not uh, really well structured. So uh, the next part in the next part, I think that uh, we should uh, try to do something with this uh, and to um, try to uh, do better uh, and uh, refactor our application to use some more uh, useful structures uh, for passing messages between each other. but. Now it works, and so uh, we see that, uh, like, uh, that's uh, it can be served. Uh, that's a uh, timeline actually is a working chat as well. So, um, It is not as uh, easy to do in uh, uh, other languages, I suppose, maybe I'm uh, not correct, but we implemented uh, the timeline in maybe an hour and a half, and uh, we have live event system, we have persistence in database, we show it, we have, uh, uh, we can show more. Um, and uh, etc. And actually not all web services uh, offer even this functionality uh, like uh, YouTube doesn't show new videos um, live when you see your subs subscriptions. I don't think that it is necessary for YouTube but it does not for example. So in uh, some ways we are even better than uh, some social networks that uh, exist. Okay, thank you for watching and uh, I'll see you next time.